Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to Chemistry and Talk. So in this particular video, let us speak about CSIR NET. Now, CSIR NET is one of the most important exam that is that is conducted by NTA, that's National Testing Agency in India. And it, it if you qualify CSIR NET, you are eligible for either lecturership or you are uh, eligible for doing PhD in any of the cream institute throughout India. Now, first of all, let us understand what what basically is CSIR NET. Well, CSIR NET stands for the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, that's CSIR. It conducts an examination that is CBT, Computer Based Testing, and it is conducted by NTA that's National Testing Agency which is recently uh, appointed in India and if you qualify this if 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 you qualify this uh, you are eligible for junior research fellowship that is JRF and you are eligible for lecturership that is assistant professorship in any of the college in India or in any of the universities now there are further more uh, uh, criteria to be fulfilled uh, the criteria keeps on changing now there are many students who qualify who appear for this exam because they want to do their PhD from IITs because if you qualify JRF you are eligible for a stipend which you will be uh, receiving uh, through government of India that CSIR Institute will be providing you and you can do your PhD from any of the institute not only IITs from any other institute as well throughout India okay so the two main reasons for appearing for CSIR net examination is first thing is that you can you can appear for your PhD and the second thing is you can get a job which is the most important thing if you qualify CSIR net you are eligible for a lecturership that is assistant professorship in any of the degree college throughout India throughout India not only into a particular state okay in any state university or any uh, any college or any university throughout India fine now the most important question that students usually ask me is the eligibility criteria who can appear for CSIR net examination well the eligibility criteria criteria for appearing for CSIR net is that you should at least you should be MSc qualified or it should be everything is written over here you can read it in detail that MSc or equivalent degree or integrated or something something with at least 55 percent marks for general category for general category it is 55 percent marks you should at least have 55 percent marks in your MSc and 50 percent for S SCST or other uh, reserve, ca uh, reserve categories okay so this is one of the most important criteria candidates enroll for MSc those who have enrolled for MSc I mean who are appearing in MSc who have not passed MSc or having completed 10 plus 2 plus 3 years I mean they have completed their graduation and they have enrolled for the masters of the above qualifying examination can also appear for CSIR net examination so that simply means if you are in your currently in your masters you are appearing from uh, you, do, you are doing your masters from any of the institute in India you can still give this examination it's not compulsory most of the students feel that they can only appear this examination once they they pass their masters no you can give this examination during your masters so one of the best opportunities when you are in the first year of your masters you can start from there so you get four chances you get four uh, examination because this examination is conducted twice in a year first it is conducted in the month of june and second it's conducted in the month of december okay so when you are in your masters when you are appearing for your masters you can give the first year when you will in your first year you can give that june attempt then december attempt then again when you will be in the second year you can appear for the June attempt again and then for the December attempt again so you will in all you will be getting four uh, you can say four attempts to uh, appear for this examination okay so it's up to you whether you want to start it from the first attempt itself or you want to wait for your masters to be completed you want the entire syllabus to read or I mean it totally depends it's your personal choice I did not appear for any of the any of the attempt when I was during my masters I directly attempted for uh, this examination after my masters now the next question that usually student ask me is about uh, the syllabus for CSIR net now what I'm sharing with you is the official syllabus that I took from the official website the syllabus is for inorganic chemistry you have got chemical uh, periodicity chemical periodicity that's your periodic table structure and bonding that's your chemical bonding now look if you see if you look at the syllabus the entire syllabus that you see over here is it covers the entire 11 12 graduation and master let me tell you it cover entire 11 12 it does not mean that if if even if you don't know the basics you can qualify your CSI and examination you need to know basics because the syllabus is designed in such a good way that it will test all the years that you have spent in education system CSIR NAS is the last examination that you are going to appear and it will test your entire basic knowledge so you have to prepare uh, you you know you cannot say that I don't know basics or, or I will mug up with the formulas and I will appear for the paper no it will be quite difficult for you to pass this examination just by mugging up the formulas so chemical periodicity chemical bonding heteromole uh, look the syllabus mentioned over here is quite limited but you can get an idea that study as much as you can it's not necessary that uh, if I have mentioned structure bonding in homo and 
matter or molecule you will study only that part most of the time what you see in the pdf or in the official syllabus is is in a concise way like it's it's quite condensed it's not elaborated e chemical periodicity includes everything that you can study about chemical periodicity because you never know a question can be asked from any any section of that chapter okay so you need to study chemical periodicity chemical bonding acid base chemistry then the main group elements okay then in a transition elements organic compound cage and metal cluster simply means organometallic compound it's a part of organometallic compound where you study about borons boranes carboranes analytical chemistry some part of your analytical chemistry is asked in inorganic chemistry there's no separate section for analytical chemistry separation uh, spectroscopic electro and thermoanalytical method you have got bio inorganic chemistry and you have got characterization of inorganic compound by ir raman nmr e epr mosbor uv visible nqr ms electron uh, mass spectroscopy electron spectroscopy microscopic technique you know whatever you study in your masters the entire syllabus there's nothing separate for csir net whatever you are going to study in your 11 12 including your 11 and 12 the basics of 11 12 the basics of your graduation and the entire syllabus of your masters will be asked in csir net examination now let me tell you there are three separate papers the first paper obviously comes for uh, you know problem solving and general knowledge where you solve basic uh, you can say uh, aptitude test the part 2 will be containing physical plus inorganic plus organic in equal equal weightage okay there's there's no partiality done over here there's equal weightage to physical inorganic and organic most of the time students feel that organic uh, questions are more dominant in csir net examination but that's not the case unfortunately organic questions occupy a large volume because the structures and the questions they occupy a large volume so most of the papers most of the space inside the paper is occupied by organic question whereas uh, uh, all the questions of physical chemistry can be uh, can be accommodated in a single page on the contrary organic require minimum 5 to 10 page so usually student have this notion that okay organic chemistry is more dominant for csir net that, that's not the case you can also pass csir net by just studying physical chemistry and inorganic chemistry if you skip organic chemistry still you can pass okay you can qualify uh, you probably you may get not get good rank you will have for good rank you will obviously have to go for organic chemistry as well but those student who feel that organic chemistry has got more weightage in csir net that's absolutely wrong that's not right okay physical inorganic and organic they all have got equal weightage now if you ask me which are the most important topic for inorganic chemistry my personal suggestion would be uh, once once upon a time my my professor in my degree college told me that it during my master's told me that inorganic chemistry is one of the easiest subject to prepare for csir net if if you are given a choice to prepare for physical from physical inorganic and organic always keep organic as one of the choice never never skip inorganic chemistry because the questions from inorganic chemistries are quite direct you can easily attempt them and they are like quite logical based if you have read them you can easily attempt them now the most important chapters that i can suggest you is chemical periodicity uh, there will be many easy questions which are directly asked from your to 11 12 basic chemical bonding obviously some part of the chemical bonding is quite tough just like uh, mot molecular orbital theory the molecular orbital theory part is quite tough which will require uh, hard work but the lower part of chemical bonding is quite easy so if you study up to graduation level you can easily attempt questions from uh, chemical bonding which are level one i call it level one the level two is molecular orbital theory which is quite quite tough so you will have to you will have to prepare for that okay acid based chemistry is quite easy trust me acid based chemistry is quite easy then coming up to main group element most of the time i advise student to leave main group element the simple reason is it's quite messy you know you have to study a lot of things from group main group element but if you are if you are really good with mugging up you can remember many things because it requires a lot of memory power so if you can remember many things you can buy heart many things you should actually go with main group elements okay transition state element and coordination chemistry never leave this chapter never ever leave this chapter one of the most important and the most important topic is coordination chemistry and transition state element there's no separate topic as d block element it's transition state that's d block and coordination chemistry there are many 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 questions look if you study coordination chemistry your chemical bonding is automatically done because you can never understand coordination chemistry unless and until you have not studied chemical bonding so the best way to start coordination inorganic chemistry will always start from periodic table uh, start with your basics of 11th and 12th then up to graduation level and then up to the mm, post graduation level from any of the standard reference book that you are uh, referring periodic table then go with chemical bonding always go with chemical bonding okay and then go with coordination chemistry coordination chemistry and then always go with organometallic this should be your sequence for studying okay organometallic and then probably you can go with bio inorganic 
bio inorganic because till the time you reach bio inorganic chemistry most of your concepts which are required for bio inorganic chemistry will be cleared never directly start coordination chemistry most of the time what student usually do is they directly start with coordination chemistry uh, considering chemical bonding as an 11th standard topic okay I don't need to stand, stand, study chemical bonding. I can directly start with coordination chemistry. Never do that because coordination chemistry involves a lot of knowledge which will be directly derived from chemical bonding, okay, about uh, VBT, about molecular orbital theory. And then you start with coordination chemistry. Once you are done with coordination chemistry, then sh you should go with organometallic chemistry. Never start organometallic chemistry without studying coordination chemistry because you can say organometallic is just the application of coordination chemistry. Coordination chemistry itself is very vast. Trust me, it's, it's very vast. It will take a lot of time for you to complete coordination chemistry it's really very vast i will tell you about the books which books you can refer for coordination chemistry even for organometa uh, organometallics and bio organic chemistry why i am uh, quite hesitant about uh, main group elements the simple reason it's main group elements is more vast than coordination chemistry at least coordination chemistry has got some logics you can understand things but main group elements you will have to buy heart many things like the properties of element and many many other things so always keep main group element as the last option if you can but if you have got a good memorizing power then you should go with uh, main group elements is not a problem okay so these three topics chemical bonding coordination organometallics are really very important B many a times i have seen students not comfortable with bio and organic chemistry because it involves a lot of uh, biological science let's just like hemoglobin myoglobin okay so many times students are not comfortable with that you even you will have to buy heart many things in bio and organic chemistry just like the applications of uh, of uh, metals always start with periodic chemical bonding coordination organometallic and bio and organic chemistry this should be your sequence of studying in organic chemistry and i would suggest one important thing that if possible start your preparation with inorganic chemistry because this will boost your confidence inorganic chemistry is quite easy trust me it's quite easy and you can complete your inorganic chemistry if you study honestly and sincerely it will take it will not take more than one and a half month more than one and a half month or m probably two months to complete your entire inorganic chemistry because it's, it's really quite easy you can really do it okay now it all depends upon how how your how much your basics are already clear now cages and metal cluster will again be in organometallic chemistry analytical chemistry let me tell you one thing really frankly there are not many questions which are asked directly from analytical chemistry so if you are thinking of skipping it you can give it a try you can skip it okay it it won't harm you it won't cost you much bioinorganic chemistry as i already mentioned it's it's a vast topic again all the topics in inorganic chemistry the topics are limited but they are vast okay they are limited but they are vast then this is uh, you can say spectroscopy it's a part of spectroscopy and nuclear chemistry many a time student feel that it's it's okay if i leave nuclear chemistry don't leave nuclear chemistry there are many questions from nuclear chemistry which are in direct contact with chemical kinetics of your physical chemistry so if you are studying chemical kinetics you can easily cover nuclear chemistry and nuclear chemistry is quite easy trust me it's quite easy you can easily solve the questions asked from nuclear chemistry and uh, obviously uh, it's not up to 11th level the nuclear chemistry over here is little up to higher level so you will have to prepare for it spectroscopy will be covered in in your physical chemistry so no need to uh, uh, study it separately obviously uh, inorganic in inorganic chemistry coordination chemistry will be containing uh, a separate part of your spectroscopy that is called as uh, inorganic spectroscopy now the next part will be your physical chemistry most of the time I, I i i personally feel that students are not comfortable with physical chemistry because physical chemistry involves a lot of physics and you will have to buy heart many many things and the first and the foremost enemy that students find in physical chemistry is quantum mechanics or quantum chemistry students are not comfortable with quantum chemistry so what i can tell you is if you're not comfortable with quantum chemistry who says you to study entire quantum chemistry you don't you don't have to be a scientist in uh, quantum chemistry you can study the basic uh, basics of quantum chemistry trust me when you when you will look at the previous year question you will realize there are so many questions questions which are directly asked from 1d particle 3d system 1d system 3d system a hamiltonian operator and you can say when you go to the higher quantum chemistry perturbation theory when then you go to uh, the organic compound okay so there are many questions which are directly asked so you can solve them tunneling effect okay so i would what i would advise is go with postulate operator in algebra uh, you can go with particle in one box harmonic oscillator hydrogen atom if you're not comfortable with hydrogen atom you can leave it because there are a lot of equation which are involved in hydrogen atom you can leave it shapes of atomic orbital which is a quite simple topic orbital and uh, spin angular momentum tunneling now with approximation methods in quantum chemistry perturb variation principle perturbation theory okay up to second order in energy and their application atomic structure and spectroscopy term symbol many electron system and anti-symmetric principle now this is also part of of your quantum chemistry so this three points over here then huckel rule uh, chemical bonding in diatomic molecular orbital valence bond theory huckel theory conjugated biases the chemical application of group theory so this four points these four points are from quantum chemistry 
quantum plus atomic so quantum plus atomic has got a lot of weightage in physical chemistry there are many questions which are asked from quantum and atomic and this is one of the uh, one of the uh, primary reason that student hate physical chemistry because uh, that there are th there's not much content about uh, quantum chemistry available in free domain on youtube and uh, if you all know the situation that we we most of the student uh, you will believe me most of the students are not comfortable with the lectures they are conducted in college colleges or universities okay so quantum chemistry is usually a nightmare for physical chemistry students then uh, you have got group theory symmetry elements point group character table selection rule character table is quite important there are many questions from character table symmetry element is quite simple now group theory is really really simple if you study group theory the higher level of group theory is little complicated where you get ir and nmr and ram and everything involved but still you can that's character table still you can prepare for uh, uh, group theory so group theory will be quite easy so what i would advise is don't start directly with basic principle and quantum mechanics skip this part right now so if you're preparing for physical chemistry and if you're keeping physical chemistry is one of your option always start with group theory or you start with spectroscopy molecular spectroscopy because m even my channel in, in hindi has got many videos which are from for molecular spectroscopy so you can find many videos about spectroscopy in free domain uh, free of cost so you can start from there you can start from chemical thermodynamics well chemical thermo thermodynamics is quite easy as far as your csir net is concerned you can easily prepare for that you easy in the sense you uh, it's comparatively much easier than quantum chemistry at least okay then you've got statistical thermodynamics now statistical thermodynamics is something new most of the universities do not teach statistical thermodynamics up to graduation level especially i can speak about mumbai university so suddenly student find statistical thermodynamics something new in their masters okay so statistics statistical thermodynamics well there are at least one or two question from statistical thermodynamics so if you are thinking of skipping it i would say okay fine not an issue but don't skip chemical thermodynamics and molecular molecular spectroscopy ir raman nmr selection rule the basic principle magnetic resonance okay don't skip it then you've got electrochemistry quite easy there are so simple questions from electrochemistry i would probably uh, advise you or recommend you that don't skip electrochemistry if possible go with electrochemistry you can find many videos about electrochemistry in free domain uh, if at least my channel has got 47 videos about basics of electrochemistry uh, they won't be helpful for you for csi net but yes you can cover your basics of electrochemistry from my channel chemical kinetics i have covered the entire chemical kinetics on my hindi channel from where you can cover entire chemical kinetics up to higher level so go with electrochemistry chemical kinetics then you have got surface chemistry the easiest chapter among them and then you have got solid state one of the most easiest chapter again so what i would advise it if you are starting then you have got polymer chemistry and data analysis just skip data analysis if you are preparing for physical chemistry always start with the simpler topic that's solid start with kinetics start with electro this will boost your confidence and they're quite simple you can find many stuff which is available in free domain on youtube okay or on websites or anywhere from wherever you are studying so solid kinetics electro and then you can say surface surface and then you can say spectroscopy always start from them then thermo and i would suggest thermo and uh, group theory thermo and group theory uh, study them separately because that will uh, require a lot of time they will consume your lot of energy and time and then you can say quantum quantum is again going to be a nightmare for you people so keep these three topics separately it's okay a few people must be thinking that if i skip this three topic will there be a good chance that i can qualify csir net by skipping this i i would say yes it's not that all the entire paper is made out of quantum chemistry there are a few questions from quantum chemistry instead of quantum chemistry if you think that i'm thinking of skipping quantum chemistry i want to study something else if you skip quantum chemistry then go with at least one chapter from organic chemistry so that your marks are balanced it should not happen that you are skipping quantum over here and you're not studying anything from organic chemistry so what basically you are doing is you are reducing your chapter so just replace don't reduce replace if you find thermodynamics very difficult from here replace thermodynamics with something else okay replace now a few people must be uh, thinking that at least minimum how many topics should we study from a particular uh, section like physical chemistry well the answer will be complicated it all depends upon how much you can study if you can study all the 14 chapters well and good if you can study seven chapter it's okay it's fine if you can study four or five chapters again it's going to be easy it all depends up if you study less number of chapter the probability that you get a good rank decreases if you study more number of chapter the probability that you will be getting a good rank again increases so it all depends upon how much you want to study actually or how much you can digest it all depends upon your capability and your capacity okay now let's speak about uh, organic chemistry 
Now, since I'm not from organic chemistry, still I'm I'm just speaking about organic chemistry. IUPAC nomenclature is going to be one of the most important topic over there again. Regio and uh, stereoisomer. Stereoisomerism, or I can uh, actually say stereo chemistry, is one of the most important part for organic chemistry. I would recommend every student that go with stereo chemistry. Don't skip stereo chemistry. Now, for understanding stereo chemistry, let me tell you, you will have to go back to your chemical bonding. so if you don't know chemical bonding if you don't know chemical bonding if you don't know the hybridization the geometry and the shapes it will be difficult for you people to understand stereochemistry okay so start always that's just the one of the reason that i always suggest that start with inorganic chemistry inorganic chemistry will lay foundation for your organic chemistry you can easily understand organic chemistry because once you know about the compounds their properties the re, the catalysts that are being used was the function of alcl3 how nabs4 uh, operate what alcl3 basically does in the reaction system then understanding organic chemistry will become quite simple for you people so always start from inorganic chemistry and then either go with physical chemistry or either go with organic chemistry then aromaticity is going to be one of the most easiest topic you can find the entire entire content about aromaticity on on youtube it's available in free domain uh, at least not on one chap channel you can find it on multiple channel some part from this channel some part from that channel and you can prepare for aromaticity then organic reactive uh, intermediate or you can call it as intermediates well this is going to be a vast topic and it's i won't say it's very difficult but yes it's going to be simple but if you prepare if you spend a lot of time on uh, intermediate you will have to buy hard a lot of thing in organic chemistry just like physical chemistry you mug up uh, formulas in organic chemistry you will have to buy hard many many name reaction the properties of intermediates okay now the next topic will be organic reaction mechanism this is one of the most challenging part reaction mechanism name reaction see yes now if you ask me how many name reaction do i have to buy hard well the answer will be again complicated as much as you can it all depends upon your capacity buy hard as much as you can there are few name reaction i would suggest refer cladden cladden is going to be the bible for organic chemistry it's it's going to be the light lighthouse for your organic chemistry follow cladden most of the question in csir net are as it is from cladden copy paste from cladden so if you pref prefer uh, if you refer cladden uh, your entire problem or i can say at least 70 to 80% of your problem for organic chemistry will be solved then you have got organic transformation and reagents reagents then you have got organic synthesis asymmetric synthesis pericyclic pericyclic is quite simple if you can if you can spend a bit of time in pericyclic there are very straightforward question from pericyclic uh, synthesis and reactivity of heterocyclic compound Now, natural product again i hate this topic i don't know why i hate this topic natural product you have to buy hard so many things carbohydrate protein peptide fatty acid nucleic acid terpenes alkaloids i mean you have to buy hard a lot of things so if you are good with memories if you eat lot of uh, ground nuts or you can say almonds badam bahut khate ho so then you can go with natural products <laughs> again just kidding don't mind it uh then you have got ir uv visible 13 cnmr well the spectroscopy in organic chemistry will be will be uh, based on the application they will not be based on the basic principle the questions that will be asked because spectroscopy is common in physical chemistry and organic chemistry the physical chemistry spectroscopy will involve formulas and the basic principle how the how the how the uh, uh, how the machine operates what what's the basic principle behind it whereas organic chemistry has got nothing to do with the basic principle they will be asking you question based on the values and the formulas just for an example nmr if a question is from physical chemistry nmr it will be based on the formulas of the basic principle but if the question is from organic chemistry nmr the question will be more based on the values and molecular elucidation so what i would advise what i would suggest you people is spend most of your time on organic chemistry nmr rather than physical chemistry nmr obviously without understanding the basic principle you cannot understand understanding is a different topic in case if you are understanding it understanding it's quite clear about nmr spectroscopy or ir or uv visible directly spend maximum of your time on organic chemistry spectroscopy scopy that's going to fetch you marks in csir net examination because there are very few questions from physical chemistry or uh, spectroscopy okay so spend most of your time on organic chemistry now the next question that people usually ask me is about books which books should we refer now there's not a single book let me tell you it's not your 11th 12th standard there are multiple books that you need to re- and by the time you pass your master graduation and you get into masters you must have realized that graduation and post graduation is all about self study is all about being atmanirbhar or self dependent okay you will have to refer multiple books for multiple topics there is no single author available which will give you the entire organic chemistry or physical chemistry in a single book okay so uh, the problem with masters and uh, gra- bachelors is that you won't find the entire stuff in a single book so you will have to refer multiple books so there's a list for this 
यू कैनॉट अफोर्ड ऑल दिस बुक सो वट आई वुड सजेस्ट इज गो विद पूरी शर्मा पठानिया द पूरी शर्मा पठानिया बुक इज रियली गुड आई हैव गॉट दिस पूरी शर्मा पठानिया ओवर यर विद मी एंड इवन दो आई हैव गॉट दी ओल्ड एडिशन यू कैन गो विद द लेटेस्ट एडिशन दिस पूरी शर्मा पठानिया ओवर यर सो इट्स इट्स रियली अ गुड बुक फॉर ऑल दो स्टूडेंट्स हु आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर दिस ई एस आई आर नेट एंड आई आई टी जैम एग्जामिनेशन इट विल कवर योर एंटायर केमिस्ट्री ओके एंटायर फिजिकल केमिस्ट्री विल बी कवर्ड इन पूरी शर्मा पठानिया ऑब्वियसली यू विल नॉट बी सेटिस्फाइड विद फ्यू ऑफ द चैप्टर्स बिकॉज it's a it's a textbook type so few of the chapters are not that good for them for those chapter you will have to depend on some reference books just like you won't find chemical kinetics so interesting over here you may not find um, quantum chemistry so interesting over here but you will find electrochemistry polymer solid state and or you can say uh, uh, ionic equilibrium chemical equilibrium these are really good in this book so you can depend for all the other chapters on this book and for few topics you will have to go to other books and this the list is over here for quantum chemistry what i would suggest is go with rk prasad rk prasad Prasad is in uh, is an uh, R K Prasad is an Indian author book, or you can go with Donald Macquarie. Even it's a good book, but R K Prasad is Indian author book, so you can say uh, you will find it more relevant to your C S I R net. Puri Sharma Pathania will be enough at least for uh, those for all those who want to qualify. Uh, if you want to get a good rank obviously you will have to depend on few other books fine now for organic chemistry ps kalsi for different 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 topics there are different different books over here for organic chemistry i would say cladden is going to be uh, uh, you can say a really good book cladden is actually really good book and for spectroscopy part uh, what i would say william camp is really a good book i have got william camp and it's really a good book one more book that i will suggest will be pavia for indian students i would say this pavia is really a good book pavia the syllabus inside or the content inside pavia will be more relevant for organic chemistry and it is quite in depth so you will enjoy reading pavia uh, the best book that i can say if you want a single package book you want everything in single book so i would say start with cladden start with cladden it's going to be really good book okay now uh, the next thing is in organic chemistry well the single book that i can suggest to you for inorganic chemistry will be will be jee hui and jd lee these two books are quite enough J jee hui is really good book most of the questions in inorganic chemistry will be asked from jee hui again i'm saying you will not be satisfied completely with jee hui because many of the topics are uh, not in that depth so you can go with ajay kumar for uh, organic chemistry inorganic chemistry ajay kumar is really a good book then you can go with puri sharma kaliya puri sharma kaliya this is really a good book for inorganic chemistry these books are textbook type books okay they are not reference book je who is again a type of ref uh, it's a, it's a type of textbook where the entire in organic chemistry is covered over there it's a concise book okay then there are different other books which are mentioned over here so you can go with anything that you want now the next question that usually student ask me is from when to prepare from when we should start our preparation the the best time as i already mentioned will be from your first year of master first year of msc now many of the student if you are if you are watching me and you are in your graduation just take this from me start your preparation from your graduation itself because 60% of your syllabus of your graduation overlaps with your csir net syllabus so if you are in your graduation start your preparation keeping in mind csir net as one of your target even if you are preparing for iit jam at the end of the day you will have to appear for either gate or either csir net so the ultimate option is on is either gate or either csir net and the gate and csir net are almost equivalent so if you are preparing for iit jam bhu du or any of the other competitive exams and if you are in a graduation keep in mind that you can also simultaneously prepare for csir net from your graduation itself now when to appear when to appear you should always appear in your first year of your masters when you have enrolled in your masters you are eligible for giving csir net now how to prepare sir i want to prepare how should i start my preparation either you can go with coaching classes most of the students in india prefer coaching classes or you can do self study let me give you my frank advice to you if you are if you are uh, opting for self study it's going to be really uh, hard for you it will involve a lot of hard work you will have to dedicate a lot of time for self study like uh, mo- many of the to- concepts you may n- not be comfortable with them uh, if your specialization is physical chemistry you may not be comfortable with organic and organic if your specialization is organic you may struggle with physical chemistry so self study is obviously a time consuming process you will need a lot of and then again if you are ref- referring a book you won't understand how much you have to study which part you have to omit which part you have to focus more so self study is i, I won't say that self study is bad 
I always promote self study but self study can be only done if you have got a lot of time with you you don't have a pressure that you have to qualify examination in 6 month you have to qualify examination and if you are really smart if you are talented if you are already uh, like if you are strong with your concept always go with self study but if you are an average student you are not sure whether you can do it by yourself you have an habit that someone should sit on your head for work i would always prefer go with coaching classes now there are two options for coaching classes right now in india you can either go with offline coaching classes that's in delhi or pune or kolkata or chennai the metropolitan cities because you don't have coaching classes available available in small uh, small cities okay so you will have to go away for all this crowded cities or the best option the new option that is available right now is online coaching classes what i would advise my personal advice for all students who are preparing for their masters or they are in the graduation you should always opt for online there are many benefits of online you can save your time you can sit at your home you can sit at your home you are not a 11 12 kid that we have to uh, pressurize you for studies you are self responsible you have that responsibility sense of responsibility that you have to study so you don't need offline coaching classes obviously there are few benefits of offline coaching classes which you will not find in online coaching classes but i what i personally feel for a student who is in masters you don't need someone else to tell him that you have to study so always prefer online coaching classes whenever possible because uh, financially speaking online coaching classes are more uh, affordable than offline coaching classes then what should be the strategy for minimum marks sir i don't want to crack iit uh, csi net with air 1 or 2 i just want to qualify it so i cannot give you a strategy for air 1 because that all depends upon your hard work that all depends upon your capability and capacity i can give you a strategy for at least minimum marks to qualify the cut off uh, always go with a combination of topic like if i'm not comfortable with organic chemistry i will always select in organic chemistry if i'm not comfortable with physical chemistry i will always select with this these the physical and organic combination is quite um, you can say it's quite rare most of the time what what we what i see is inorganic chemistry is common because it's quite scoring it's quite l- the syllabus is quite limited you can complete it in uh, one month or one and a half month organic chemistry is vast and physical chemistry is again very vast organic and physical requires a lot of practice mug up lot of hard work inorganic chemistry is quite logic based so you can easily score marks in inorga- inorganic chemistry so the 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 strategy for minimum marks will be that opt organic chemistry as one of your subject and then any of from physical chemistry or organic chemistry should be your other subject if your if your specialization is organic go with organic if your specialization is physical go with physical if your specialization is inorganic itself then it depends upon you you are comfortable with which of the topic if your specialization is analytical chemistry because in mumbai university you have got a specialization in analytical chemistry well then I'll let me tell you analytical chemistry is a brother of physical chemistry you can say it's it's it it arises from physical chemistry so indirectly if you're studying analytical chemistry you are preparing physical chemistry so either inorganic chemistry or organic chemistry should be the right option i would suggest inorganic chemistry will be the right option for you people because physical chemistry involves a lot of uh, problem solving a lot of formulas and let me tell you in our analytical chemistry uh, has got not uh, analytical chemistry don't have much weightage in csir net so there w- won't be many much questions from analytical chemistry so indirectly you will have to study physical chemistry so all the students who are there who are who are, uh, are uh, having specialization in analytical chemistry always keep physical chemistry as your first preference and then inorganic chemistry as your second preference try to avoid organic chemistry if possible but there are s- certain exceptional cases as chemistry is all about exceptions few people who will always opt for uh, analytical chemistry along with organic chemistry because i know one of my friend uh, he opted f- he was from analytical chemistry and he opted for organic chemistry as the other subject and along with physical chemistry so physical and organic is a deadly combination it's a rare combination Uh, the next question is what should be the study pattern look let me tell you one thing very frankly there's nothing called as minimum hours that you need to spend for studies or i should sp- study for this much hours then i will qualify with air1 there's nothing formula like this okay it all depends upon how talented how smart you are with minimum hours also you can qualify the examination and with sp- uh, with studying for 2 years you cannot even qualify just like me i studied i spent my 6 month but i was unable to qualify csir net it all depends upon your personal capability person to person it varies so the best study pattern that i can tell you from my personal experience or from my failure will be always listen lectures always the first priority should be that you listen lectures carefully if you are attending some sessions just listen them carefully then after listening read read from books always read from books listening and then reading and after reading always make notes now there are two types of notes you can make theory notes 
यू कैन मेक थ्योरी नोट्स और यू कैन मेक लास्ट मोमेंट रिविजन नोट्स एल एम आर एन लास्ट मोमेंट रिविजन नोट वन ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल फॉर लास्ट मोमेंट रिविजन नोट इज ओवर यू वॉट यू कैन सी राइट नाउ ओवर यर इज वन ऑफ माई हैंड रिटन नोट्स वैन आई वॉज इन हैदराबाद प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर सी एस आई आर नेट आई इन्वेस्टेड अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम इन प्रिपेयरिंग माई ओन हैंड रिटन नोट्स ओके सो प्रोबेबली दट वॉज द रीजन दट आई कुड नॉट क्वालिफाई सी एस आई आर नेट बिकॉज आई स्पेंडेड अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम इन स्टडिंग रेदर दैन प्रैक्टिसिंग I did not. Uh, I didn't revise. I didn't practice MCQs. I only studied. Okay, only studied. So that was the drawback, or that you can say that was one of the most important point that I could not qualify CSIR net. So you can make these type of notes. Okay, you can find these notes on my uh, on my store. Uh, on my store, the link is given in the description box. That's my. Um, Instagram Ojo store so my handwritten notes but they are not detailed notes okay they are not theory notes they are last moment revision notes where you will be finding all the important formulas as you can see over here color rosh's law so i have mentioned all the important formulas over here so activity mean activity coefficient activity coefficient then thermodynamic relations over here so in single paper you have got uh, this is one of the paper from electrochemistry there are at least six or seven papers so you will find the entire uh, bunch over there so the notes will be available in pdf if you want if you are interested in buying such notes you can buy it from my online store you can get it from there the amount is very minimum okay you can afford it so you can prepare such type of last moment revision notes what my advice would be last moment revision notes should be prepared by yourself and the theory notes you can buy it from some coaching classes don't sit and write the entire chapter in your language that will consume a lot of time this was a mistake which i did when i was in hyderabad i made my own notes which consumed a lot of time i was lacking time and as uh, and till the time csir net paper arrived i i literally wasted my entire time in preparing theory notes last moment revision notes so i didn't get time for mcq practice i didn't get time for revision so my advice would be from my failure that always buy notes from buy notes from some coaching classes the coaching classes stops there are a lot of coaching classes available in pune it's in delhi kolkata chennai hyderabad is a hub delhi is a hub you can buy you can uh, courier facilities are available you can buy them from courier okay so last moment revision note should be prepared and it should be in your own language but if you feel that you need to buy them as well you can you can buy it from my store so this should be your strategy listen read and prepare your notes and after your notes are prepared then go with mcq practice always practice mcq previous year questions always go with previous year question there's no such book right now available in market where you can get practice questions for csir net actually it's not available for right now always go with previous year question at least minimum 10 years so when you go with 10 years every year csir net is repeated two times so you can say there will be 20 question paper there will be 20 question paper okay one two question paper per year then how much time a day how much time should i spend a day well it all depends upon how much serious you are how much you can whether you are an average student or you are a smart student uh, how much you already know or how much you have to read if your basics are very poor you will have to spend a lot of time if your basics are quite strong you won't have to spend that much of time so it it depends from person to person there's no uh, there's no rule that if you study for 15 hours you can qualify with air1 if you study for 18 hour you can qualify with air more than one okay there's no rule as such then is it possible to give csir net along with a job i would say it is possible again uh, in exceptional cases it's possible i have seen people who who did the job and along with job they were preparing for csir net and then they qualified it but again it's exceptional uh, if i speak about the mass the normal audience it will be quite difficult the frank answer will be quite difficult because you will be spending a lot of time in your job you will be exhausted and by the time you return back to your home and when you sit in front of your book you will be half slept okay so you will be in half sleep and probably the effectiveness of that study will be reduced it it won't be so effective so the best advice would be that if somehow if you can if you can uh, like if you can sacrifice your job so the best thing that i can advise you is try to clear your csir net during your masters it is really difficult it's really difficult to clear csir net once your master is qualified or you can take a gap of one year you can take a gap of one year one year gap okay and then go to some coaching classes where you can dedicatedly study away from all the distractions away from everything or uh, if you can afford it okay it again depends whether you can afford it or not and then take a year gap and then prepare for csir net that would be the best advice what people in mumbai do basically the trend in mumbai is they go to either hyderabad or they go to either pune there are no such good classes in mumbai being the financial capital of india still i won't say there are many good coaching classes for csir net in mumbai so people from maharashtra they prefer either hyderabad they prefer either uh, pune 
uh, and people from north they would either prefer jaipur sikkar or you can say delhi or you can say chandigarh uh, and then you have got uh, you can you have got uh, dehradun over there in north so from east side i would say kolkata is a good hub you have guwahati which is a good hub for csi net education okay so i would suggest if you can sacrifice job for one year and then you can prepare for csi net that would be a great deal now should we appear for m should we appear after msc or during msc i already uh, cleared this uh, study material from where can we buy study material for csi net look let me be really very frank you can buy it from delhi there are many coaching good coaching classes in delhi which are providing good notes or you can go with online coaching classes when you enroll for some online coaching classes they provide their own notes so my advice would be rather than spending your time in books wasting your money oh, i won't say wasting your money rather than uh, buying multiple books what i can suggest is go with the notes because the notes from coaching classes will be up to the mark and they will be like only for csi or net no other stuff will be there so uh, notes from delhi you can uh, or from hyderabad okay from hyderabad you can take it from hyderabad okay hyderabad you can take it from hyderabad you can buy it from pune if you have some contacts uh, about coaching classes from hyderabad i can tell you one thing uh, you can go with uh, student xerox in hyderabad student xerox because i was in hyderabad so i know about hyderabad there's a there's a student xerox you can search uh, search it on uh, uh, on uh, either on uh, facebook or google you will find student xerox so you can call uh, that person and you can ask for a courier service he will provide you anyone from delhi there are courier services available from delhi as well now the most important question that usually people ask me what after csir net suppose if he qualifies csir net well there are two cut off out of 200 uh, it's a 200 marks paper the first cut off will be somewhere around 90 it's variable let let us let us assume the first cut off is 90 and let us assume that the first second cut off is 110 if you are if you are below 90 you are not qualified for csir net but if you are between 90 to 110 you are eligible for lecturership you can be a assistant professor in any of a degree college or university right now while the rules may change phd may be uh, compulsory or subjected to the uh, the rules whenever you will be applying so the minimum criteria that you should be at least ls qualified lecturership qualified if you get above 110 above 110 you are eligible for jrf you can apply for phd and you will be getting a stipend it's good you can survive with that stipend but that again depends whether that amount is sufficient for you or not it all depends upon your need for few people 35000 is really a good amount for few people 35000 may not be a good amount they they want more because their financial situation is not that good so going for phd is again your like it's your decision whether you want to go for phd or not i hope from this video most of your doubt regarding csir network cleared and if there are more doubts about csir net you can comment in the comment box i will try to make a separate video again for your doubts whether if in case if i miss something from this video and in case if you like this video if you find this video informative please do share this video with your friends invite them till then bye bye take care and god bless you all